This lesson is a continuation of Hess's Law, a topic that we started last week. These notes correspond with your note-taking guide for section 6.3. And let's begin. When a solid melts, its atoms or molecules move about vigorously enough to break free of the constraints imposed by their neighbors in the solid. When a liquid boils, particles move much farther apart from one another. A change between a solid and a liquid, or a liquid and a gas, is called changes of state. In both cases, energy must be furnished to overcome the attractive forces among particles. The heat required to convert a solid at its melting point to a liquid is called heat of fusion, and it is often symbolized as H fuss. Likewise, the heat required to convert a liquid at its boiling point to a gas is called the heat of vaporization, and it is symbolized as H vap. Heat of fusion and heat of vaporization for many pure substances are provided along with other physical properties in reference books. Here we have a table showing the melting points, the enthalpy of fusion, also known as the heat of fusion, the boiling points, and the enthalpy of vaporization, also known as the heat of vaporization. We're gonna look at water more specifically for a moment. For water, the heat of fusion at zero degrees Celsius, the energy required to melt solid ice at zero degrees Celsius into liquid water at zero degrees Celsius is six kilojoules per mole or 333 joules per gram. The heat of vaporization for water at 100 degrees Celsius, its boiling point going from the liquid to the gas is 40.65 kilojoules per mole or 2,256 joules per gram, a considerably bigger number. Now we're gonna scroll up and look at an energy diagram to illustrate these phase changes and the energy involved. I'm gonna take you through this graph, starting with a chunk of ice at minus 50 degrees Celsius, bringing it up to its melting point or freezing point at zero degrees Celsius, then heating that up from a solid into a liquid at zero degrees Celsius, then heating the liquid up to its boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius, vaporizing all that gas or liquid into a gas, and then heating the vapors from there. So if we look at the energies that are involved, the first thing that we're doing is we're gonna heat up that chunk of ice. We're gonna use Q equals CM delta T, the specific heat for the water in its solid state, the mass of the water sample, and the change in temperature of the water sample. And that's gonna be the energy to get it from minus 50 to its melting point. Then when we're going through the melting process, we're gonna use the heat of fusion to calculate from um, the solid state to the liquid state, the energy it requires to melt that ice. Then we've got a liquid and we're gonna heat the liquid using Q equals CM delta T again this time using the specific heat of liquid water, and the temperature change will be from zero to 100 or 100 minus zero when we're doing the delta T. Then we have liquid at 100 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna vaporize that using the enthalpy of vaporization or heat of vaporization until all those molecules have separated and formed a gas. And at that point, we still have water vapor that can be continuously heated to hotter and hotter temperatures. So we're gonna use Q equals CM delta T to where whatever final temperature we uh, choose as our destination. So those are calculations that need to be done for each phase of that heating process as we go from the solid state into the gaseous state. You might notice that the heat of fusion value is much smaller in energy because in the heat of fusion, all we're doing is breaking some of the intermolecular forces. We're softening it up a little bit. 
We're taking the solid with lots of intermolecular forces in a crystal lattice, and we're breaking some of those intermolecular forces so that particles of water molecules can start to flow and, and form a liquid. But when we get up to the heat of vaporization, it's a huge value for energy because in the heat of vaporization, we need to break all the intermolecular forces. So it's not good enough just to soften them up a little bit and break some of them. All the intermolecular forces between all the water molecules have to be broken to go into the gaseous vapor state. It should also be noticed that we're putting energy into the reaction all the way throughout this heating curve as I go from left to right. But if I was to switch the direction of this, perhaps starting with steam and cooling it down into a block of solid ice, then it would be an exothermic process. And my temperatures would all be reversed. And my enthalpy of vaporization and enthalpy of fusion would be reversed as well. And we'd be releasing all that energy. So absorbing energy as we go to the right or releasing energy as we take that graph to the left. Now we're going to take a look at some calculations to go along with that scenario. First thing to point out, the specific heat for water changes with changes in state. Something you have to be alert for. Take a look at the data. Water in its solid state has a specific heat of 2.06 joules per gram degree Celsius. Water in its liquid state has the familiar 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, which is what we normally use. And water in its gaseous state, 1.92 joules per gram degree Celsius. So it does change with differences in state. We got to be alert for that. Problem one goes on to say, calculate the quantity of heat involved in each step of the phase change and the total heat required to convert 500 grams of ice at minus 50 degrees Celsius to steam at 200 degrees Celsius. The heat of fusion of water is given, the heat of vaporization of water is given, and the specific heat capacities of the solid water and steam are given because they're less familiar. It's assuming that we know the specific heat of water. We have a little equation here showing us what the reaction is going to be. Water in its solid state at minus 50 going to water in its gaseous state at 200 degrees Celsius. So if we follow along with that graph from the previous page, the first thing we're going to do is warm up the ice. It's at minus 50. We want to bring it up to its melting point at zero degrees Celsius. So we're going to use Q equals CM delta T using the specific heat of the solid water, the mass of the water, and the final minus initial temperature to see that we need 51,500 joules just to warm up the ice. Next thing is to do the heat of fusion and we want to melt the ice. We're not changing the temperature here, we're just melting the ice. It's going to be a solid at zero, we're going to make it into a liquid at zero. And that requires just some factor label. We know how many grams of ice we have, we know how many joules per gram it takes to melt the ice, and we can calculate that value as well. 166,500 joules absorbed to melt the ice. Next thing, we want to warm up the water. Right now it's at zero degrees Celsius. We want to bring it up to its boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius. Q equals CM delta T. This time the specific heat of liquid water, mass of water, and the final temperature, uh, initial temperature. 209,200 joules absorbed. Now to vaporize the water. We want to take the water and go through the heat of vaporization, 500 grams of water. As it vaporizes, the temperature is not going up. It's going to stay at 100 while it's a liquid until all of it's 100 degrees Celsius at a gaseous state. And therefore, we're just going to use the heat of vaporization value as a factor label conversion. So now we can talk about a considerable amount of energy, 1,128,000 joules of energy to vaporize the water. That 
heat of vaporization value is enormous compared to the melting of water. And now we've got steam. The steam's at 100 degrees Celsius, and you can continue to heat that gaseous steam if you keep on putting energy into it. And now the temperature is going to go up as well. And we're going to use Q equals CM delta T again. This time, the specific heat of the gas, the mass. And I said to bring it up to 100, uh, 200 degrees Celsius from 100. So uh, that's a much lower number again now at 96,000 joules. So each stage requires a certain amount of energy. And this is Hess's law because Hess's law tells us it doesn't matter how you get there, but if you add up each of the stages, you're gonna get the total amount of energy involved in that process. So if we add up all the uh, steps from the uh, solid at minus 50 all the way up to the steam at 200 degrees Celsius, it's gonna require 1.65 million joules of energy. Now, that would be the energy needed to heat that 500 grams of ice from minus 50 to 200. And I wanna point out that it's important to pay attention to this, that if we were to cool it back down and go in the opposite direction, like I said, these temperatures would be reversed for the final minus the initial. And that would give us the negative sign on our Q value here. And likewise, if we were going through and um, condensing, let's say, liquid or, or the gas into a liquid, these uh, heat of vaporization values would just be reversed as well. We'd have a negative 2256 if we were going from the gas back into the liquid. So watch out for the signs. It all depends on which way you're going in these phase changes. Are you putting energy in? Or are you giving energy off? Always got to watch out for the signs. Now would be a great time to pause the video and work through the next four problems on your own. It always looks easier when somebody's doing it for you, but it's important that you're thinking it through. When you're ready to check your answers, you can see that the answers have already been added to each question, or you can just continue playing and see the problems worked out for you and explained again. Continuing with problem number one. What quantity of heat is evolved when one liter of water at zero degrees Celsius solidifies into ice at zero degrees Celsius? I like to start out with an energy diagram showing the phases, and that lets me figure out how many steps this is going to take. I'm at liquid water at zero, and I'm going to go to solid water at zero. That's the section I want to calculate. And that's the heat of fusion. And that is just factor label. One liter, convert to milliliters. Use the density of water to get it into grams. And then use the heat of fusion value to convert to energy. You'll notice that there's a negative sign up here because we're going the other direction. We're going from the uh, liquid into the solid and that requires a release of energy. So we need the negative sign here to get the right sign here because this energy is being released. Liquid to solid changes the sign of the heat of fusion. Looking at number two. The heat energy required to melt one gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius is 333 joules. If one ice cube has a mass of 62 grams and a tray contains 16 ice cubes, what quantity of energy is required to melt a tray of ice cubes into its liquid state at zero degrees Celsius? So again, no temperature change here. The ice is beginning at zero and it's melting to a liquid at zero. So it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna be going from the solid to the liquid, but this time we're putting energy into it. 16 cubes, 62 grams a cube, 333 joules per gram. That's the energy absorbed. And uh, I would have put that into kilojoules. You can find a pen to fix that. I 
and that's a positive value. Continuing on. What quantity of heat is required to vaporize 125 grams of benzene at its boiling point of 80.1 degrees Celsius? And we've got the heat of vaporization of benzene provided. So I want to vaporize it. That means I want to go from the liquid to the gaseous state. No temperature changes, no other phases. This is just straight factor label. 125 grams of benzene converted to moles, but this time because the energies for the uh, heat of vaporization is in kilojoules per mole, I do have to convert it from grams into moles and then moles into kilojoules to find out how much energy was absorbed. And then the freezing point of mercury. It's cold when it freezes, it got, it got, got down to minus 38.8 degrees Celsius. We want to know how much heat energy is required to cool it from 23 down to minus 38 and then freeze it into a solid. So we've got more than one step this time. We've got a liquid at 23 degrees Celsius, close to room temperature. We want to freeze it into a solid. First, we got to cool the liquid down to its freezing point. And then we have to go through the phase change to get it into a solid. So this is a two-step process. Step one, cool the liquid. Q equals CM delta T using the data that's given in this problem. Step two, freeze the liquid. And that's going to be straight factor label using the heat of fusion value for mercury. And the uh, last step would be to combine the two values and figure out what the total energy that has to be released is in order to cool it down and turn it into a solid. Cool down the liquid and turn it into a solid, minus 273. So that's the idea using Hess's law in conjunction with phase changes and uh, heating and cooling liquids, solids, and gases.